Yeah, welcome back. Uh, in this session, we're going to be describing and demonstrating the process for contributing data to FaceBase. So I'm going to give a high level overview of the process and then Laura is going to describe some resources we have to help with the data management management and sharing plans that you may need to uh, put together. And then Alejandro is going to give a demonstration of doing an actual um, or a small partial uh, um, data set um, uh, submission. Okay, so first of all, and I think Chris mentioned this in the morning session, I think face space can be can provide a great home for your dental, oral, craniofacial, and related data. So while we have a broad collection of data across multiple animal models and human subjects, and multiple experimental assay types and imaging modalities, they're all tied together by their relationship to DOC and closely aligned research objectives. Uh, in face-based data are first-class research products. So just like a publication, they have proper attribution, they have archive grade, citable identifiers, they have terms of use that inform users to cite your contributions, and all of it is enhanced with online visualization capabilities. You initiate a data submission to FaceBase by filling out a short form. This information gets reviewed by the FaceBase Steering Committee, and that committee vets all proposed contributions to FaceBase. The main criteria are appropriate handling of human subjects' data and eth ethical handling, uh, handling of animals in research, and then making sure the data are aligned with DOC and closely related research areas so that it's a good fit for the, the audience of FaceBase. And we try to get back to you within two to three weeks. Sometimes it can be shorter. We basically have a two week cycle for meeting together as a steering committee. So we need to meet and review all um, proposed data contributions. Um, at, uh, typically, if there's any issue, we'll reach out, we'll ask for additional information, maybe a brief chat, especially if it's human subjects data, um, usually for the, the open access animal data, um, there's not as much uh, of an issue encounter, just mainly the fit within face space. And then we typically like to meet briefly with someone from your team just to remind you of the process and answer any questions you, you may have up front. Now, you're kind of um, ahead of the curve here by joining a boot camp, So you're getting a lot of the material that we would go over anyway. So it would really just be, say, a touch up, you know, reminder in, in your case, but um, we can go into greater depth with you about specific types of data you're gonna contribute and maybe help you think about how you would organize it. The process is overall what we would call self-service in the sense that you or someone from your team will be filling in online forms uh, and uploading your data. We provide automated quality control feedback on a daily basis. And when you're ready to make the data public, we do a final review to ensure that we release quality curated data to the public. Before you finalize any publications associated with the data, first we, um, we can keep your data embargoed. So it'll be private, only visible to your team. Uh, and then uh, while, while you're working on say manuscripts, something like that, and then we also ask that you include proper citations to your own data. So in your data availability statements, you can actually include proper citations. And I'll show you the format again um, uh, in this session. So and th this helps to formalize those data availability statements. So, um, you know, a lot of times you're preparing to share data along with, say, preparing a manuscript. Uh, and so you'll want to have that data kept private until uh, until you're ready to publish and we can do that in face space so you can upload your data without it being visible um, all right and then the way you describe your data set follows the data model that we showed in the earlier session in the data user session of the boot camp so again just to just to remind you or or for those of you who weren't in the morning session at the top the project represents any kind of group that's contributing data to face space. That can be an individual lab, R01 type of research, intramural research, et cetera, kind of a, a research project of some type that's contributing data. And then data sets are the collections of the data 
and the metadata, that's the information that describes the data files being submitted to Facebase. Those include information on individual experiments. So these would be details of the assay types, the protocols used, the instruments, maybe if it's imaging, imaging modalities used for each of the experiments. Experiments are typically organized around a group of biological replicates. So let's say an animal study where you have uh, mice of a, of a, say a mutant population and a control population at different age, you know, developmental stages, those would each be different um, groups kind of grouped together in different experiments. And so that's how the data tend to be organized, uh, ideally. And then um, the data files are uploaded and associated with, with each of the biological replicates. And so we know precisely where the data comes from. Now for human subjects data, we enter the metadata in the public site, the metadata that's de-identified. So more like demographics based on whether you can share that. So just the shareable information that can be made open, uh, openly available, which is typically just enough so that uh, someone who comes to the site will know the, the, the basic outline of your data, but the actual data files and any more detail that our controlled access will be on a separate server. And we, we go over that specifically in those cases. So, um, all right, next. So when a data set is composed on FaceSpace, it gets a digital object identifier. That's again, an archive grade persistent identifier for your data. And it's resolvable to take uh, readers or consumers of the data right to your data on FaceSpace. In addition to the title, description, and keywords from standardized terminology, you may, you may also want to include cross-references to data that you've submitted to another site or repository like GEO or dbGaP, et cetera, or if you have multiple data sets within FaceSpace, or if your data is a, an, um, a secondary analysis of something on FaceSpace, then you can actually have cross-references to the FaceSpace data sets. And you can see that kind of in the middle on the left, uh, um, the label for cross-references. And then finally, I just also wanna point out that every data set has clearly displayed attribution so that the contributors to the data set are given credit. And the contributors uh, are of course included in the citations that we generate as we've, as we've seen a, a, a couple of times here in the morning. Um, okay, we can also enhance the accessibility and usability of your research data through online visualization. So uh, I demonstrated this earlier, but these again include the orthogonal slice viewer, 3D volume viewer, surface model viewers, high resolution microscopy or just high resolution imaging with annotations, single cell browsing, browser visualization online, and then genome browser, which is not, not shown here. Our automated data pipelines handle both single cell and high resolution images. We're working on additional automated pipelines so that, um, so that more of the data will just automatically end up in the online visualizations on, on our site. And then, so, Having your data on FaceSpace means it's treated and recognized as a, a citable scholarly work. As I've indicated, we generate ready to use citations that include the contributors and DOI and title and so forth. And, and again, plan ahead to include a citation to your own data set while you're preparing a manuscript for publication. Don't wait until late in the process. We, again, we can embargo your data. It remains privately held until released at a time of your choice to coincide, coincide with your publication. And then finally, just a few recommendations to streamline your experience contrib contributing to FaceSpace. So first of all, uh, review the metadata and data guidelines early. And actually you're, you're doing that now or you'll do that next as Laura will continue the next presentation. And then schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us before you begin or someone from your team. And that way we can just kind of help remind you of, of the process, remind you of the tools and answer any questions. We can show you some additional advanced features that we wouldn't have time in, in, a, in a normal, um, in, a, in the bootcamp setting to go over everything. Um, and then we even encourage you to submit even part of a data set. So let's say you're, you're, you've decided to submit to face space, it's been vetted and approved by the steering committee. Uh, even even uploading part of it and letting us review it and, and get back to you with feedback, we're really happy to do that. And we're here to help throughout the process. So 
uh, we can we can help out at any time with giving um, giving answers to questions or help with vocabulary terms that you need, etc. And then the the point of contact is our face space helpline. So that goes to myself, Alejandro, Chris, Laura, and, and others within face space. And throughout the process, typically Alejandro will be the one kind of shepherding you through the process of contributing data. But it's it's best to kind of reach out to the helpline because that way, um, if we allow Alejandro to go on vacation for like a half a day or something, you know, we'll get your email and we'll get back to you. So, okay. And with that, I am going to turn things over now to Laura.